it's Cole Davis, and today we're going to deconstruct the song Blackbird by the Beatles and apply it to the upright bass. I did a solo arrangement of this that's coming out on Friday on Spotify, but you're going to be the first to hear it right now. So the first thing I did was I transcribed some of the guitar part and tried to apply it to the upright bass. Of course, when you're playing chords on upright bass, it almost always has to be an arpeggio, right? Like you can't really do this because it doesn't sound good. <laughs> You know, so if I, were, if I were to play the chords, it'd be like. Like, you, you can't do that, right? But when you arpeggiate the chords, it gives the same effect. A lot of people ask me, how do you play chords on upright bass? And it's like, well, you're not actually playing chords. You're playing a line that sounds like a chord, right? You're arpeggiating a chord to give the effect of a chord, but you're not actually playing chords because you're not doing this. Like, that just, that doesn't sound good. We don't want that. But we do want this. Right? And originally what I did was I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to just continue the line. Right? And then I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a harmonic here. I know there's a harmonic I can use. So then I found this. This harmonic right here. If you're curious... I have the sheet music for this on my Patreon. I have the sheet music and a video of me actually coming up with this arrangement in real time, all available on my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. I have transcriptions. I have a trio album that is exclusive to my Patreon subscribers. I've got a bunch of stuff on there. So this is, if any of you play electric, which I'm sure you do, the G string harmonic, it's right above the B flat on the G string. So if any of you play electric, which I'm sure you do, this harmonic is right above the B. We often ignore this one, but it's, it's there. And then you have this right above the G and the D string. So. Someone asked me on Instagram the other day if I prefer gut strings or steel strings for harmonics. Which do I think is easier for harmonics? And the answer is steel strings. I actually think steel strings are easier to play harmonics on. But I play gut strings, and I just love the sound of harmonics on gut strings. It has that, like, muted, cool sound. So that way it doesn't sound too in your face, but it sounds like this mysterious kind of thing. I love it. Because the steel strings, the harmonics are really sharp, and they kind of, like, pop out. But here it blends in. So I blend the harmonics with the gut strings, and then I play the low note with the steel strings. So my setup is D and G, Velvet Garbo, which is a, a synthetic gut string, and then A and E, uh, Spiral Chords, which are a steel string. So I'm blending gut and steel to create the sound. Rather than the aggressiveness of the steel harmonics. So all that is to say, I love harmonics, and I try to use harmonics as often as I can to create chords. And then I did this, which is the melody, you know, blackbirds sing in the dead of night. But then I was like, wait a minute, I can put some harmonics here also. So the way I played the melody is like this. So then. I play this chord again. So the whole thing up to this point is. So I'm really just using this G major harmonic sound that I found and I'm just playing it throughout. I use some more harmonics here. I'm gonna play the rest of the melody over here. That's the next part. So I'm using, I'm relying on this A harmonic because I don't want to do, like I don't want to play all these chords and like, you know, like, like mess everything up because I can't play chords in harmony at the same time. Or uh, I can't play harmony and melody at the same time, right? Like that's impossible. You can't go, I mean, 
mean, maybe maybe Edgar Meyer can do that, but I can't do that. So I'm going to rely on the harmonics here to accomplish both harmony and melody, right? Because the, the melody goes like this. Hey, take these broken wings and learn to fly. Right? And the harmony is... So together, take these broken wings and learn to fly. Right? But I can't play that all at the same time. So I'm going to rely on these harmonics. Thank heavens for this low E string. Seriously, this low E string is such a lifesaver because then you get to the low E and it's like, oh wow. I don't have, like here, I have to play the double stop on Learn to Fly. But then I got this E string right here. All right, so I'm gonna continue. And then I play this, which is in, in, the, in the original. And then for All Your Life, So that's, that you can play the melody and harmony at the same time because it's just dyads, which, which means two notes happening at once. That's all it is. It, it, it's not really chords, actually. I think the beauty of this song is I talk about counterpoint in an earlier video where I talk about learning tunes, and this tune really is counterpoint. It really is. It, it's just melody and bass, and that's all it is. If you get rid of the occasional chord, like the occasional seventh chord, you still get the complete essence of the tune. And that's what makes this song awesome. It's really just counterpoint. Someone on Patreon commented, they said, it, someone on Patreon commented this, they told me that it derives from a Bach piece in E minor. And I forget what it is. I want to sound intelligent, but I don't. I forget, I forget what it is. But if you know what it is, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, But yeah, I remember I listened to it when this person told me that and I can really hear the resemblance. And of course, that's where counterpoint comes from. So it makes perfect sense, actually. But yeah, that's what I love about this tune. It's really just melody and bass and nothing else. So at this point in the song, all your life, right? That's just melody and bass. That's just. And here I'm making a C major triad with two harmonics. This G right here. That sounds really nice. I, I, I don't know why I don't do that more. It's just a nice little C major triad, like the most, the purest sound, C major triad. <laughs> so I do that, and then this is where it gets really hard. So let's take them all your life. And then I want to play a C minor triad because that's the next chord. But unfortunately, I don't have an E flat harmonic. So I'm going to do this. And if you can't do that, that's totally fine. You can just do this. Get the same result it's just not as complete of a chord then I finish it out by going so this is a great one I love this chord because I'm implying a9 which is the chord a dominant dominant 9 and here's another stretch again massive hands so sorry what can you do but you can easily just do this. And you get the same result, right? You can do. That's fine. I just wanted to add that seven, but totally, totally up to you. You don't have to do that if you can't do it. No big deal.
So that's all I got for this video. But if you want more, subscribe to me on my Patreon where I have this full arrangement completely explained and the sheet music. And you get to hear the rough mixes before I drop it on Spotify. So follow me on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. Thank you so much for watching. CD out.